I met with the Brotherhood of Steel. They were beating up people with terrible skin condition. Wow, that's really mean. So anyway, I joined them. You do to do that this getsu and I'm going to beat up Fallout 4. After a bit of rough housing, Valerie Dance requested my help in clearing some androids over at ArcJet. This is clearly America. Androids have no place here. It's all about them apples, he also told me. It was going to be unpaid internship. Well, I didn't really get it. But if I get to beat up some stuff, I'm game. He also told me to take everything he has from inside the station. No need to tell me twice. To honor the memory of recently beat up, I placed a point in Ghoulish. Inside the station, I rummaged through the containers for anything valuable. Watch the ceiling light swing about, observed dog meat denying reality, and got stuck in a long loading screen. No crash this time, however. Before heading to ArcJet, I took all my trash back to Sanctuary for safekeeping. Went back to the police station, talked to Dance, and told him that I was ready to use him as human shield, and got stuck in a loading screen. Again. Dance and I began dancing our way over to ArcJet. On our way there, we witnessed a staged fight. <laughs> After playing tag with everyone, I stole all that I could. But Dance didn't care for the loot. He has a condition which makes him very goal-oriented. I also punched the bug, spent a lot of effort trying to score another hit, but Dan stole the kill. Just as I was about to make my mark, that pissed me off. Brah. Before entering ArcJet, Dance had some doubts about my capabilities, but I told him exactly what I'd say at my second rodeo. This isn't my first rodeo. Dance babbled some more. I didn't listen. He went inside, expecting me to back him up. <laughs> idiot. Once inside, I knocked over as many sensory bots as I could. Before Dance could get to them, he did break few of them, which annoyed me to no end. With robots, I can be as hardcore as I want and it'll still be PG-13. I accidentally entered the door without saving. That scared me a bit. Oh, thank god it didn't crash. As thanks for breaking some of my toys, I left Dance to deal with the bots alone. I watched him struggle. I could watch this all day. And then fright him to teach him a lesson. Then I whacked my finger at him. Tut tut tut. I hope you're sorry. He was sorry. I picked up everything off the ground that I could find. Went upstairs with Dance. Yeah. <laughs> and we laid waste to the robots ruminating in there. Once back outside, Dance insisted on paying me. After first telling me he was not going to pay me and handed me my first legendary weapon. I don't need this crap, but I guess it's a nice memento. Even though I'm not going to use it in combat, doesn't mean I can't have fun with it. Pew 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 pew. Pew pew. Ooh, you. <laughs> Sorry, dog meat. Aww. My next course was clear. I began making my way to Diamond City, but I found a small raider camp near a bridge on the way. I thought of ignoring it, but I have a duty of preventing raider overpopulation. And if I don't do it, someone else might tap into that sweet nectar of experience. Perish! After that, I stopped by a fight between Diamond City guards and some green smucks. I'll show you how it's done. Not to waste any more time, I handed some jabs to the mutant puppers, wrestled with the giants, and watched a Brahmin go over the speed limit. Okay then. Once I reached Diamond City Gate, I tried to trick the game into letting me through the gate without triggering the cutscene. It goes something like this. Punch the piper, then lower your mitts. The gate opens, and you can just waltz in. Dogmeat didn't get the memo, and kept trying to eat piper's face. Hello. I tried a few times more, but it was clear to me that Dogmeat was in for some timeout at home. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Might be best if we split up for a while, boy. I immediately regretted my decision. Tried to recruit him back. Come on, boy. But he was having none of it. Time to go. Okay. I smacked Piper, then lowered my palms, gave her the pupper eyes, and by doing so, I ignored the commotion at the gate. Let me in! Piper, who let you back Ignoring that? When doors were my target, my pockets were full because of the leprechauns earlier. Then I wandered around the city, found an old timer creeping near the wall, who asked me to go grab some paint for him. Sure thing, pal. I went to a small store nearby. The local clerks were more than happy to help me get everything I needed. Nice. At this point you might be wondering, why am I helping people when I'm not really getting paid? It's because I'm strong. 
strong people don't put others down. They lift them up and then slam them on the ground. Yeah. There were some raiders outside too. Time to go meet your friends. Back at Diamond City, Kyle was accusing Riley of being a synth. So out of curiosity, I cracked Riley's skull open. There were no components inside. I reloaded a safe, punched his brother instead, and everyone liked that. <laughs> at least someone in this town did more than just stand and gawk. After that, I went back to the old creep, handed him the paint, and then got paid. What a great day it's been so far. That evening, I went to enjoy myself at a local bar. And a walking, talking beef jerky forced me into a dialogue. You there. We need to have a conversation. And handed me a quest. I hate it when that happens. That quest is actually pretty interesting. I have to remember to do it later. Spoiler alert, I didn't. Later that evening, I had a chat with Ellie about finding her boss for her, because willpower alone doesn't pay the bills. Her best description for me was the clothes her boss wears. Nothing about being a literal walking scrapyard. Oh well. After that, I went to sit by the noodle shop and contemplated for 8 hours, came into conclusion that stools are uncomfortable, and then the Major himself provided me some valuable input. Excuse me, but I'm very busy right now. Oh cool, I don't remember asking. Then another dialogue and a quest was forced on me. Hey, I think those Bobrov brothers are looking for you. Legendary! I don't usually drink this early, but back to the bar it is. The barkeep with a weird accent asked me to help his friend, who has a face for the radio and voice for print. To build up some confidence, I was worried that it was going to be complicated. But in the end, we just beat up some guys at the bar. And then in a brewery, good time on the route. <laughs> his name was Cooker. We also beat up the barkeep. He's regretting now the monster he created. Back at Diamond City, the news of an arena nearby, run by raiders, touched my eardrums. That sounds awesome! I don't care what it was I was doing. I have a new course. On my way there, I got to play with some pooches. One tried running away. No, no, the game's not over yet. Then I had an argument with some raiders. Nice. Somehow ended up playing on roofs of some tall buildings. And in an effort to get down, I entered Leighton Towers. Inside, I found, and you're not going to believe this, more raiders. What a good day it turned out to be. One lady raider, later, thought I was using a stealth boy. Even though I was standing right in front of her, I think the yes men around her just don't dare to tell her that her eyes are going bad. There was punching, explosions and good time all around for the whole family. This is what you get for being naughty. How am I on the freaking roofs again? Once I made it outside, I had the toughest fight I've had thus far. Take that punch! After slapping everyone, I made it back on the ground level, using a handy dandy elevator, and following a short hike, I punched myself into the combat zone. I'm here to chew ass and kick bubble gum, and I'm all out of ass. Everyone in there was hit by, and struck by, a smooth imbecile. After that, another one from the beef jerky clan wanted to sell me a girl. I declined. Don't let anyone dictate your future, lady. You got this. Have it your way. Before reaching the subway, where Ellie's boss was hiding. Yeah, I was still on that quest. I went to meet Shrek. He rose from his swamp, all excited like. Dog meat is just swimming away. You wanna go, big guy? I punched Shrek in his handsome face. He didn't appreciate that. It was a pretty difficult fight. I stabbed so many steam packs into myself. Bro, it was just a prank. I looked like a cactus, but in the end, I was avoided with furious power fist. I sincerely forgot that it... I sincerely forgot that this was the price. Now there's some more fisting to be done. Excellent! After that hard-fought victory, I entered the subway station, listened in some bad lad conversation, got bored and put armor on dog meat. You're such a handsome boy. Following that, I introduced my fist to the trigger men. Oh sweet, I found another trap. Had a brain aneurysm when I found a cooking pot. I've played so much Project Sunpoint that I got some ideas from this here cooking pot. And after having my share of the fun, I snapped out of it and got back on track. Subway tracks, <laughs> get it. <laughs> the last trigger man before the world needs to make an appointment with his dentist. 9 out of 10 dentists love me. The last one has morals. After that, I made it to Ward Doors. And Dog Meat really couldn't wait to sink his teeth into something. <laughs> Relatable. I boxed my way through the vault. Eat this punch! You have some too. <laughs> yeah. Ow. You're pretty good. 
Blood and thunder. Until I found Dino. And Dogmeat tried to make new friends. What? He didn't want to be friends with you. So I sent him down to Heckle, where he can meet and in it with other dog haters. I found Inspector Gadget. He looks like a broken grass test dummy, but I like his personality a lot. I began bashing my way out, discovered a tasty snack on one of the triggermen, met with a legendary salami face, sent Maloney and his riffraff to sleep, and suffered through whatever this was. Nick, you okay? Are your wires crossing? Back at Diamond City. I donated some clothes and guns in exchange for caps, and decorated dog meat with a skullcap bandana. Who's my little badass? My earlier fights learned me good, and I bought all the steam packs that I could, without using any of my caps of course, by trading it for the crap that I don't need. That's how I always play these kind of games. I hold on to my money until the game is over. When I was about to hand Nick back to Ellie, I noticed that he was nowhere to be seen. The evidence points that I didn't make sure he was in the car before leaving the parking lot. I'm such an awful parent. After going back and picking up Nick, I handed him over to Ellie. We had a chat about something something Sean. Oh yeah, right. My son's missing. He's small, but hard to miss, he screams. And has the capability to stink up this entire stadium if left unchecked. I don't think he appreciates my sense of humor. The fun wasn't over yet. Nick invited me to play detectives. And we went to invade Kellogg's home. On our way there, Nick started inspecting the wall. Please move. Nick. Hold your horses. Y y you hold your horses. We couldn't get in. The door was locked. Even Nick couldn't hack it open. And he's 80% lockpick. So I went to the cloud district to ask Mayor for help. I met Piper on the way. She was raving to the secretary. Oh no, don't talk to me. I ignored her and sweet talked Mayor into giving me the key with charisma of one. Oh, of course. Once inside the target residence, I took everything valuable as reparations for wasting my time. We were looking for Kellogg. The guy who stole my kid and shot my wife. Maybe he should have mentioned that earlier. Anyway, he wasn't there. For my next trick, I showed the dog a bunch of nothing in my hand. He got agitated, and now I'm following him. We went out into the wasteland. We played detectives and searched for clues together. We had such a good time. Haha, <laughs> dogweed, wait up! We chased rats, wrestled with bears, jabbed some ghouls, and talked with a bucket. I can't feel my legs. Tee <laughs> Tonight we dine on crab soup. These guys are tough to put down. Following all that distraction, we eventually made it to Fort Hagen. Even a stopped clock is right twice a day. Is this the place? Is he in here, boy? <coughs> yeah. The only way inside the fort was through the roof. It's moments like these that makes me think using guns would be kind of nice. Parkour! There we go. Say your prayers, Kellogg. I'm coming. Inside Hagen, I punched all the make-believe men in the face. Dragtastic! And eventually, after getting lost in the first level multiple times, I thought it was a boxing back. I'm disappointed. I found the serial box man himself. My sins are standing down. Let's talk. He killed my wife, but he wants to talk now? <laughs> Hilarious. After that peaceful exchange, I found a piece of Kellogg that looked interesting. So I stuffed it in my pocket. This will be an emergency snack in case things get bad. With Kellogg now turned to dust, I took an elevator back to the roof and watched dog meets pass during the ride. You know what they say about men and big blames? Just saying. Back in Diamond City, I chatted with the two snoops. Hyper is a journalist you see. Forgot to mention that. Our little mystery incorporated gang came into the conclusion that scooping up Kellogg's brain was the next natural step. Gruesome! Then Piper told me, I owe her an interview, despite us talking for the first time today. I'm nobody's speech. On my way to good neighbor, I got lost. And this somehow happens every time I'm heading there. But I captured a sick shot of good neighbor over the walls. It looked as dead as ever. Oh, freaking finally. How can I get lost every time coming here? Oh, snacks. Nah. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care now. Bye bye then.